Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I just watched the new Barbie movie in the theaters and it's just as good as I expected it to be. The fashion, the outfits was just perfection. Last time, I showed you how to make the perfect day pink plaid dress from pattern making all the way to sewing. This time though, I'll be showing you how to make the iconic striped one piece that the first Barbie doll ever wore. You can always trace the swimsuit that you already have at home and do the alterations that I'll show you. But I'll show you how to make a pattern for a strapless one-piece bathing suit. So you can actually use this tutorial for other swimsuits, not just Barbie related ones. For this project, I'll be using a serger, but you can follow the same steps with the regular sewing machine as well. You just need to have a stretch stitch like a zigzag stitch and you're totally good to go. And as always, if you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments and I'll answer all of them. Okay, so now let's go to pattern making. Here are the body measurements that you need. First, your bust circumference, your waist circumference, and your hip circumference. Multiply those three by 0.85 in order to reduce them, since we'll be using swimwear fabric and it's really stretchy. Now the vertical measurements. The distance between where you want the neckline to be and your waist, the distance between your waist and your hips, and the crotch depth. Sit on a chair and measure from your waist all the way to the chair. Start by drawing a line. Mark the distance between the neckline and the waist, the waist and the hip line, and the crotch depth. Draw perpendicular lines on all of those points. On one side, we will draw the front, and the other side, we will draw the back. Now here, mark the bust measurement divided by 4 on each side. Here the waist divided by 4, and the hips divided by 4. And on the back side, lower 3 cm. For the gusset, you can measure panties you have at home or a bikini you like and use the same measurement. But I'll be using 4 cm on each side for mine. Now we need to connect the lines. In the reference photo, you can see it's not that high cut, so I'm missing it off of that. Then connect the curved lines for the leg hole opening. The back is almost the same, but you can alter the fit of the back as much as you want. If you want more coverage, make the curve to the outside. If you want less coverage, make the curve to the inside. The one thing you need to keep the same as the front is the gusset. Now I'm making the front neckline a bit curved following the original design. And the back I'll make it a bit curved as well. This is the base for the swimsuit. So I'll make a twile now just to make sure how things are going before altering the pattern for the stripes. So I'll cut it on a different swimwear fabric that I have in here. The fit is good, but I need to alter the cut of the legs. So those are the alterations that I made. Um, I marked it with a pen while it was on my body. And now I'm going to try to transfer that to a new pattern piece. I'm going to retrace it and then alter it in another sheet of paper. So I erased all of this here. And I also lowered one centimeter in the front and in the back. Okay, so here's what I did. As you can see from the reference photo, her one piece has a total of 13 stripes. So I divided the total of the side here, I measured it and I divided it by 13. And I marked it down. I tried copying the design as be the best way that I could. So he this one's gonna be black, this one's gonna be white. Black, white, black, white. Black, white, black, white, black, white, black. And they also have this design here where I'm going to cut in, sever in separate parts, I think, and then I'm going to sew them together as well. So white, white, black, black, black. Okay, so here's the waistline. 
And I try my best to keep the black stripe right at the waistline because since it's black, it's gonna give the illusion that it's smaller. I don't know if that's the look that you're going for, but that's how Margot's one piece looks like. And to make sure that all of the stripes would be the same at the back, because this part right here will be sewn here, right? So I want the sides to look like they're matching. I make sure to extend the line where it hits here, all the way to the other side. So they will be sewn together and they will match. I don't really have a reference photo for the back but you don't really need to make going up so I just made the lines going down and then here it's following the same design as the front because I thought it would make more sense. And those right here that we made before are going to be the lining for the one piece. Something else that's also really important is for me to name every one of those pieces because there are so many pattern pieces that I need to be able to place them together afterwards. So I'm going to use a number to refer to each one of them and I'm going to take a photo as well. So every time that I'm when I'm sewing the, the one piece together, I can know where each pattern piece is supposed to go. Having the pattern pieces numbered made it way easier to identify each one later on. If I didn't do that, I would definitely struggle. Okay, so now I just have to cut the pieces. I got black and white swimwear fabric. And I also got flesh colored swimwear lining, in which we're gonna be cutting out of those pattern pieces that we made beforehand. And I really recommend you lining it because even high quality white swimwear fabric still gets a bit transparent, so I'm gonna use two layers of this one. Okay, so this is the front. I've placed them all. The one thing that you have to be the most careful when you're making this is the distance that you're going to be cutting, the seam allowance that you're going to leave when cutting those pieces because if you leave them too little and you don't sew the right seam allowance later on, it's either going to be too small or it's going to be too big. So if you leave one centimeter as a seam allowance, you have to sew exactly at one centimeter because if you mess that up, this part is going to be way too long or it's gonna be way too short. Since I'll be using my serger, the usual seam allowance that we leave when we're using a serger is half centimeter, so this is what I'm gonna be using here. I'll be cutting with half centimeter at the top and half centimeter at the bottom, but if you're using a regular sewing machine, be careful, because if you leave too much of a seam allowance, it might get too bulky. So I would recommend using a smaller seam allowance, but you have to be really careful when you're sewing as well, so everything matches up. Um, matching those seams when sewing is gonna be kind of a headache because they might seem like they match really well but once you do this, which is what you're supposed to do when you're sewing, <laughs> they suddenly don't. Everything is just the opposite. So ideally you would have to sew this and then this. But I know that one of the best tips to sew when you're using a serger or when you're sewing this type of fabric material is to just make it straight, but I'm gonna pin it in place just in case. I'll take you with me to the sewing machine, but I have never sewn something so opposite like this, so I might be making a mistake. But I still have a lot of fabric to work with, so in case it doesn't look really good, I'm just gonna redo it. I'm just gonna cut it again and try it again. Okay, so here's the middle trying to match. It 
did work. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it's possible. Once I reach this part right here, the cups, I'm gonna go into more detail. But so far, all you have to do is this. Sew all of those panels one to another, which will probably take quite a bit of time, but I'll show you a montage of me doing that now. After sewing it, I'm slightly scared that the stitching is gonna make it stretch less because of the tension of the stitch. But I'll finish this before doing any changes, but in case it's actually too tight or too short, I'll let you guys know. Uh, so future me here to tell you guys that it did in fact turn out a little bit snuggly, especially when you compare it to how the test I did fit me. like. It was way tighter than the test, and I do think it was because of the stitching. So I would recommend when you're cutting the pattern pieces to leave an extra seam allowance at the sides, like one and a half centimeters at least at the sides, because you can always take it in if it's too loose on you, but you cannot add more fabric after you already cut it. So that would be my tip. Now let's go back to the tutorial. But now I just need to sew these parts together and then match them here. And now we just have to add it the same way that we did with the other parts. Now I'll place the panel we just sewed right sides together with the lining and sew the leg holes and the top. We're going to sew them and add elastic to those seams so they get sturdier. But don't add the elastic on top of the lining layer. We have to add it on top of the stripes layer that we just sewed. You don't need to stretch the elastic while sewing, just place the elastic on top and sew naturally. Do the same thing with the back panel. Now turn one of them right sides out and insert it inside of the other. Make sure you're placing the lining facing the lining and the striped layer facing the striped layer. Now pin it in place and sew. You can use this method to make any other seamless swimsuit. Now you need to take a seam ripper and unstitch a small hole. I chose to make mine at one of the leg openings. Then use the hole to turn the swimsuit right sides out, pulling the fabric from within. Then close the hole by hand stitching it. And you're done! So, what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you have any requests for me. And if the video was helpful to you at all, don't forget to click on the like button. 
I'll be coming back with a new pattern really soon, so I hope to see you guys next week as well. Bye!